So Make a Card Monday, I've been doing the last few weeks and I've been doing this live talking through thing. And I realized that when I did it in the past, it made the editing so much faster. So um, today I'm going to talk through this and hopefully it won't be too lengthy. I'm going to be testing out two different types of watercolor mediums today. The first is the new paper fashion watercolor basic set from our, uh, from American Crafts. And this is in conduct in conjunction with Katie Rogers, who is paper fashion on Instagram and her um, website or whatever. So um, I have high hopes that this is going to be a good watercolor set. It looks suspiciously like the Prima sets, but we're going to open it up and find out. And then I also have the Nuvo watercolor pencils. I don't know if these are new or not. They're new to me. In fact, when I ordered them from the packaging when, on the website, when I saw it, I didn't realize they were pencils. <laughs> so I was actually a little bit disappointed because I have not had good experience with watercolor pencils in the past. And so I was hoping that these were actual pans of watercolor. So we're going to test these out. I mean, I bought it. I don't want to waste it. Um, I'm sure I could gift it to someone, but I'm going to test it out just because I am curious. And to make the watercoloring super fun, I'm going to use the round and round background stamp from Simus' Stamp. So I'm going to stamp this in Versamark and heat emboss it with I think white embossing powder, and then I'll be back to start the painting. I'm changing the embossing powder color to British Monroe Gilded, which is a gold powder at the last minute, just because it'll be a little bit easier to see on screen, and also for me um, to see the gold lines as opposed to the white. Before I tape this to a board, I'm going to cut this down just a little bit so that I can use the same stamping on two cards. So I'm just gonna test a little border strip with the color pencils. This other one over here, I'm going to use the entire piece with the watercolors. All right, and just because I wanna get it out of the way, I don't know why I'm dreading this, right? Maybe I shouldn't be telling you this because I don't like to get bad reviews, especially for products I haven't even tried yet. So really, I shouldn't, be giving this the benefit of the doubt. Maybe it, they'll be real good. You never know. I'm highly doubtful. But, you know, I'm going to try. I'm going to give it a good college try. All right. I like that it comes in a tin. And it does have a little bit of cushioning on the top here. Which is sort of glued down, but not. <laughs> and here are the pencils. I'm going to just dump them out. All right, and from, all, from what I know about watercolor pencils, um, you should be able to just lightly color and then use water to spread the pigments. So here we are. This is just gonna be like a colorful type painting. It's not going to be anything specific. And I'm gonna use just a regular brush like this. This is a size two Escada Prado brush. These pencils aren't particularly sharp, so this should be fun. <laughs> Using a very light hand. And I just want to get that color on one end. And then my plan is to have it fade out. I do like that the color is actually spreading now. I was worried that it would just stick to the texture of the paper and not really blend, you know? Like that was my fear, because that's what my experience with other watercolor pencils in the past. So that's not that bad. I mean, I'm not getting like a perfect blend, but and I do have to kind of work over the color a little bit more than I would like normally, but not bad for a first attempt, right? I'm barely touching the paper with the pencil. Um, and maybe that's been, you know, not what I did in the past and that's why I didn't like it, but it just makes sense to me to use a very light hand because otherwise you're pressing that color into the paper 
and then it doesn't even have the opportunity to pull up from it, you know, and start to spread. So I am thinking about like flattening my brush and kind of rubbing the texture of the paper, trying to get that pigment to start moving. So I am doing that a little bit. I have clean water on my brush now. I'm just gonna try to pull it to this corner. And like I did before, I'm having to go back in and work back up into that area where the original pencil was and then come back to the faded area right here. The, kind, the thing that's kind of nice about using colored pencils like this is that you can add all of the color all at once and then do all of the painting all at once. I could see how that would be really appealing, especially if you're traveling. Like I know a lot of people who color or paint on airplanes. So not having to, you know, switch your markers or take things out might be, you know, appealing. Of course, I am doing very simple painting with these watercolor pencils. I'm not doing anything really elaborate today. I'm just kind of experiencing them right now. Okay, I'm really having to rub with my brush over that area because I think the sooner you paint after you've colored with the pencil, the better it will blend. I'm just kind of getting that impression based on the red and then to the orange because this orange isn't still seeing where that color is a little bit. The thing that's almost unfortunate about using colored pencils like this is that you don't have the chance to really blend colors together before you apply them to your project. Um, I have seen some people where they use a separate piece of watercolor paper and they um, color with the colored pencils two different colors and they mix them and then bring them to their project. But basically that's like just using a regular watercolor set, right? Like what is the advantage of using colored pencils, watercolor pencils over regular watercolors? I suppose maybe you have a little bit more control, but then again, you can't mix colors easily. Trying to keep a light hand, I'm having to remind myself, don't, don't color so heavily on it, you know, like give the colors a chance to pull up from the paper texture. I'm not getting super vibrant color. I think maybe in order to do that, you might have to layer. I could see how that could be a possibility with watercolor pencils. You know, for a watercolor pencil set, as this isn't this isn't so bad. I'm actually impressed and surprising myself. Like maybe I should find those watercolor pencils from yesteryear and give them another try. I also think um, maybe having some more experience with watercoloring in gen general makes the result a little bit different since when I tried those before, it was many, many years ago. All right, I'm gonna do this teal color, which is called Scuba Blue. This is a really light color. It doesn't pack a whole lot of punch. So I'm most definitely going to have to come over with another layer. It's really, really anemic, but that, you know, gotta work in layers. This blue has a lot more intensity than that other one. In fact, that other one almost seems like a watered down version of this blue. The purple, like that scoop of blue, doesn't pack much of a punch. I wish it had a little more intensity to it, but it's pretty light. Okay, so it's basically painted. I'm going to hit it just so it, everything dries, and I'm going to do an additional layer of the scoop of color and possibly the blue because it really did fade back quite a lot. It is looking a slightly more green, so it does differentiate between the other section of blue, but I'm not loving how pale it is. I wish it had more intensity. That red shade really got my hopes up. So my main complaint with watercolor pencils in the past has been that um, when you color on the watercolor paper, the texture of the paper grabs onto the pigment too much and it won't let go. Even when you add water on top, it just doesn't work. Um, by using a lighter hand, I feel like I've been able to really spread the colors out more so they're a little bit um, easier to handle. So, I mean, is it my favorite way to watercolor 
Probably not. But I think the convenience factor of having pencils, and you could even just use a water brush instead of, I'm using a traditional brush, but you could use a water brush or an aquash brush, and it would make it really convenient, especially for travel, because you're not, you know, like literally, all you'd have to do is put these in a little Ziploc bag, and you have it, put your, put your water brush in there with it, and you have everything you need to go. Um, that being said, a small watercolor pan set like this is also pretty convenient. So, I mean, it really is just like, pick your poison. Not that it's a poison, but you know, your choice. So now I'm gonna move on to the other one and test out the Paper Fashion Watercolor Basics from Prima. Like I said in the past, I like to tape down my paper, especially if I'm gonna be using a lot of water on it. So I'm gonna to try to do the same technique that I did with the watercolor pencils. Um, kind of have one side of the area I'm coloring be a little bit more intense in color than the other and have it fade out. I think that's a really good test for watercolors so you kind of see what the color looks like at full strength and then also when it's faded out. You get that whole variation of the full strength color and then as it fades. So this is a great way to swatch your watercolors without having to technically swatch them. So I'm gonna cut this off. And I should be able to slide it out. All right, so this is what the tin looks like. Looks exactly like, oh crap, I have to unwrap all these. Okay, well at least they give you the color names. Um, I don't know if they give it to you on the packaging elsewhere, they don't. They don't give you the color names anywhere else. So I'm gonna take a minute and unwrap all these. So you do have to bend back these little ends. I'm not sure what they're actually called. Some of them don't want to bend. So I'm using my scissors because I don't want to break a nail. Okay, now I'm going to bend each of these back so it holds it in place right over the top of each one of these pans. They're not in there as tight as they were, but not bad. They're still gonna slide from side to side, it looks like. And then back into the tin. I have heard you can put a little bit of tape or glue underneath the pans and it'll stop them from kind of sliding. But And I'm kind of annoyed that there's these little joints down here so you can't, whatever. <laughs> so truth be told, I totally just took a break there because I went to the gym, worked out, came back home, had some dinner, now I'm painting again. So anyway, <laughs> I had some time to think about this while I was gone. I think I'm gonna go ahead and just swatch these colors because they look so different in the pans and it's hard to tell what the colors are gonna look like. So I'm just gonna swatch these really fast just in the order that they are in the palette. Now this white probably isn't gonna show up at all, but it's gray from the black. <laughs> all right, so brown. My first impression of these is that the colors are activating really quickly with the water. So I really like that. I, I don't like to sit there and swish the colors, you know, for an extended period of time trying to get them to show up on my brush. I That really is a pet peeve of mine. So I like that these are pretty vibrant and full of color right from the beginning. I like that. So I should be able to keep these swatches, this little impromptu little squiggle. <laughs> I should be able to keep these within the palette so I have a reference for when I paint later. And that pink's gorgeous. And this is, I think this is kind of like a dark maroon red. Ooh, that's a really pretty red. That's a gorgeous red. I'm picky about my reds when it comes to watercolor. Ooh, I like that one too. I think that one was called Red Kiss. Aptly named, so that's gorgeous. Okay, first off, this color palette is killer. I love these colors. I think they're gonna be great on my card. I, I'm not gonna use the brown or the white, 
but I think I'm going to use all the other ones because it, I think it's a great color palette. I'm, I'm not going to mix them today. I purely want to use them from the pan and see what I can do with them. So here we go. And I think for this part, um, I might talk through the beginning just so I can give you my thoughts. But then I'm eventually going to speed up the painting and put a little music to it just because I'm just anticipating that's what I'm going to need to do so that I can really get through all this painting and not have the video be like 35 minutes long. So here we go. One of the things I really like about um, painting on projects that have heat embossing on them is that um, it really contains all of the paint. Okay, so I didn't have a whole lot of water on my brush, so it grabbed a lot of color. This is a pretty intense blue. It's kind of like a cross between a dark blue and a Payne's gray. It's got kind of like that really like dark navy color, which I am totally digging. Okay, so I just added some clean water on a brush. I'm just trying to extend this out, being really careful around that edge. Swishing my brush once more, adding more water. I'm getting some blooming here, but that's totally okay. I'm going to sop it up a little bit with my paper towel. It's interesting. I like how these watercolors are behaving. The water sort of pushes that color and I'm really loving what's happening. Now this is still really wet so I don't think I'm going to get any harsh lines but this is really really pretty. I was kind of anticipating these to be like completely like my Prima watercolors that I've had for a few years. I don't use them a ton, but I mean, I have used them in the past and I think these are better. I mean, the color palette's real nice. That's what I'm really, really loving. For whatever reason, this brush that I'm using today is picking up a ton of water. While I'm painting, I wanted to tell you guys about my friend Kathy's 30 day coloring challenge. I've done a few videos in the past here talking about it. Um, the coloring challenge just started a couple days ago. So if you want to get involved and do some coloring and share it on Instagram, you can use the hashtag the daily marker 30 day. Um, she does these coloring challenges a few times a year and they're a lot of fun. I highly recommend them. I think for the most part while I'm painting, I'm going to have the darkest shade always be on the left side, just because that's how I'm painting. And then I don't need to pick up my board and move it too much. I'm trying to keep the intensity of color on the one end. And so I'm not, I'm trying to not introduce too much water right away because I do want there to be a very purposeful change of saturation. This blue has my heart right now. <laughs> I love it so much. Okay, so I'm gonna keep painting and I'll turn on some music and speed up the process.
Okay, so all of the painting is finished. So now I'm gonna start assembling these cards and I love how these colors turned out. I wish I would have had like this space down here if I'd reserved that for this teal shade, but not a big issue. I'm gonna go ahead and remove it. All right, I'm gonna use the Waffle Flower A2 Layers dies to cut out this shape in here. I think I want it to be, let's see, I think I want it to be about that big. So I guess I'll do about right there. And I'm just gonna hold it in place with a little bit of washi tape. All right, and then I'm gonna run this through my Gemini Junior machine. A few of you have asked me what this grid is. It's actually the magnetic mat that comes with the Gemini machine. I, I've only had my Gemini machine for, I don't know, maybe a month. And so uh, this is the one that they're shipping with now. And then I just have a piece of paper, helps protect any, if there's any paint still hanging out. And I'll run this through my Gemini machine. The cardstock I'm using is Nina Classic Crest Solarite. And I'm gonna score this at five and a half to create a top folding card. And then for the other one, I'm gonna score in the same spot, but this is going to be a landscape card. I'm using some foam tape for adhering the watercolor panel. I'll just adhere this directly onto the front of the card or as centered as I can get it. <laughs> All right, and then for the other card, which as you can tell, the color difference is extreme. The pencils just don't pack as much punch as the watercolor set from American Crafts. So I'm gonna trim this down so only the painting is showing. All right, and this one's gonna go right across this one right here. So I'll go ahead and put my foam adhesive on the back. And then as I'm lining this up, I'm gonna use my grid mat and put my card base directly into the squares on the grid. And then I can use the lines across the top to help line up so that it's perfect. All right, so now I need some sentiments and greetings. And I thought it'd be really fun to use um, a couple new die sets from the greeting farm. I think these are fairly new. Um, I'm gonna use a thank you on this one. I think that'll be a nice size for that one. And then I'm gonna do this hello on this one right here. So I'm gonna die cut these um, out of some white paper. So I'm going to use some multimedia mats and I'm going to hold the die cut right up here and Put just little dabs of glue all over this. All right, and this is gonna wanna peel up. So I'm going to take some acrylic blocks and just stack them on top. As many as I can, because it's gonna need some weight and that will finish the card. <laughs> okay, so here are my two cards today, testing out some different watercolor mediums. Um, I'm really impressed with the vibrancy of the American Crafts Paper Fashion watercolors. Um, I'm impressed with the Nouveau watercolor pencils in the fact that I was able to get them to kind of spread and it wasn't as apparent that they were pencils. However, they're not as vibrant. You'd have to do many, many layers. So if I was picking between the two, I'd definitely go with the paper fashion ones for American Crafts. But um, like I said, they're completely different methods of application. So it really just depends on what you want to get. I kind of enjoyed using both. I think it was kind of fun, but I don't think that these colored pencils, these watercolor pencils have won me over for all watercolor pencils. Um, I think they leave a little bit to be desired, but for what they are, they're really good. 
So hope that is an honest review for you guys. I hope you take it in the intent. Um, I still think that they could be great for other people who love watercolor pencils, just not, not the best for me. And that is the video. Hope you guys enjoyed these cards. Um, on screen right now, I've got three additional watercolor videos for you to check out. Uh, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe and check out the supplies down in the video description. Um, when you click over and use those links to shop, it helps support my channel and I greatly appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. I will see you guys on Friday for another video.